Welcome again to Needle Time. My name is Alan Cross, and today my special guest is Tom Cochran, uh, a guy that I go back with. Oh God, it was a long time. A long time. Eighty-two, <laughs> we met. You would have been a kid there. I was a kid, and I'll tell you exactly where it was: Playhouse Theater in Winnipeg. Yeah. It was the backstage reception uh, for a show on the Neruda tour. Okay. And that was the first time we met, and I was. <clears throat> Really thrilled at the time to find out. I mean, I had been through, you know, a, a couple of records with you, but I was really thrilled at that time to be able to talk to you as somebody who was from a small town myself. Right. You were from an even smaller town of Lynn Lake, Manitoba. Now, describe exactly how far Lynn Lake is from anything. Well, it's, it's literally the end of the road, so it's... Uh there's something kind of profound about that, but it's uh, it, you know when you you turn you turn left out of Thompson, Manitoba, and you just keep driving, and there's a few Iroquois Falls and right. a few communities on the way up, and then uh, then you get to Lynn Lake, which, which is basically the end of the road. When did you leave? I, I was young. I was five, five, six, and, and so it was it was a young departure, but. It's one of those things where we had the, the, my dad was just a Super 8 addict, so he took tons of footage. There was one shot in there that, that we don't, uh, that is somewhere in the archives, and it's the, the town being on, on Bombardier Snow Train, which mm -hmm. are, became the modern snowcats, what they dress ski hills with, the whole town being moved. With the church leading the way, the general store, and all the, these the, Wait, towns. the town was being they, moved? They moved the town from a place called Sheridan, Manitoba which became a ghost town overnight. It was uh, a nickel mining town. So they ran out of nickel and they moved it north to, to Lynn. And Lynn subsequently, uh, over the last 20 years, 30 years, has, has run out of nickel as well. So they're, they're one of those towns that's continually trying to survive under, under fairly, uh, you know, uh, hostile economic, uh, through hostile economic times. But they're, they're surviving and they're, they're spunky people up there. And, uh, so he named a road after, de facto, I guess, after me. It was, life's a highway. You know, Tom Cochran's life is a highway. It's kind of like Ripley's Believe It or Not. So it, <laughs> and it goes out of Thompson. There's a big sign there, and it, it's 391, and it, it's a long stretch of highway. It's like 320 uh, kilometers. With no gas so. stations or stops? Uh, well, there is. Yeah, there is. But uh, I, I told the premier, I said, you know, we should have a, uh, he, he, you know, we should have a road rally. He should lift the, the speed limit. I said it would do wonders for tourism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Have all these people in fast cars with plaid shirts and fishing rods heading up to Lynn because it's, what, it's incredible. It's what they do in, in, in Finland. Yeah. You know, they have the, 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 the rural rallies. I yeah. think it's a great idea. My dad was a pilot. I think after his second crash. Your dad and crashed then, yeah, two crashed, planes? Crashed two planes. So so I've done the same thing. I didn't know that you crashed airplanes. Yeah. yeah what did no, you do? I crash courses now. <laughs> uh, it's a it's float plane, and the first time was pretty much inexperienced. Okay, that's the first one. And that was the first one. The second, second one was a vapor lock. Pulled back on a stick, airplane got airborne, the engine quit. <laughs> so we're about 40 feet above the runway, and it's a short strip, and there's trees at the end of the runway. Airplane bounced, went into the trees, ground looped in the trees. Uh, the whole side of the airplane came off. There's fuel gushing everywhere. But I'm, I'm going through the shutdown procedure. Kier Brownstone, my bass player at the time, gets out and, he's, and, I, and I just catch him out of the corner of my eye and he's going to light up a cigarette. No! He's just freaking and, and Mongo, our drummer, is pacing back and forth. Going, ah, First time he's ever in a small plane. First time. When did you start, you picked up a guitar first, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, I started when I was 11, I guess, you know, and, and uh, I had this train set. My dad was also a train buff. I ended up selling the train set for a guitar, and, and the value of the train set was probably 20 times more than the guitar and the cheesy little amplifier that I bought. So, and it was called a Xenon, which is a lot of these knockoff guitars I used to salivate over the Sears Roebuck, you know, Sears catalog, 
Eaton's catalog, you know, all these guitars that yeah, were for the $49 yeah. or $69. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so it was, it was called a Xenon, which is like a Kent, uh, and, uh, Got this guitar and a little silver tone amp, and I was off to the races. So uh, that was that was the beginning. Uh, acoustic, I didn't get until a little while later. You know, I um, mean, you know, I started with bands and St. Thomas Blues Band and a bunch of bands in the West End of Toronto, and then um, Battle of the Bands. You know, we hit a lot of Battle of the Bands in junior high and that because, uh, and of course, the Stones and the Beatles were out, and it was just it was just this this massive movement. In, in 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 music and culture in the '60s, and and everybody was in a band. Everybody gave had a hand at it, right? And then you were in a sort of a, yeah. a coffee house guy for a while. Yeah. So that was later. I mean, I really didn't think that I would have a career in music until um, it was just the epiphany of Dylan. And uh, once once I was turned on to Dylan and Lightfoot and. and Artists of this ilk, to me, music took on a much more serious resonance, and, and uh, sometimes too serious, you know, because it's got to be fun. It's always got to be fun. So Springsteen brought that back to me later. Springs, but you know, two of my bigger influences would would have to be Dylan and, and Springsteen, and then uh, of course, you know, Neil. Some of these artists fill in the blanks. Neil was a big influence as well, and then Coburn. And Coburn was a massive influence. A lot of people don't know that. And and uh, but Bruce Coburn was was a, a big inspiration for me. Jackson Brown, and they kind of got me more into the coffee house circuit because that was a, a tour de force at that point. You know, the, the early seventies uh, into you know seventy five, seventy six, and then they started to die out. So I'm out there. You know, with my acoustic guitar, and then I started getting booked in pubs and and uh, and some pretty rough places. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Smith Falls. You know, opening for a one-arm stripper, and you know, <laughs> uh, President's Hotel in Sudbury, and and you know, I'm in the middle of a and I pull up in my beat-up little Pinto station wagon and, and cart these speakers in and and uh, in my acoustic guitar and set up and. Have people screaming for Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin and throwing uh, beer bottles at you. But one night in the President's Hotel, this massive fight broke out. And I wish I could say I was courageous and jumped in and helped this poor guy with a cane. It was probably some kind of drug deal gone bad. It was a bike gang. The bike gang came in there and I, I crawled out of that place, you know, going, don't shoot me, I'm the guitar player. It was, <laughs> it was one of those situations. But yeah, I, I, there, was some, there were some rough places and, you know, the odd place you'd Get knives pulled on you and stuff. Part of getting back into a band was self-defense. You right. know, what I mean, it was it was it was kind of safer in a band. When did Red Rider actually coalesce? I, I went. I had a, a real ill-fated journey, and it's ironic how a lot of things happen and in, in, in providence and circumstances take over. But I actually went. You know, I'd been driving cab for a couple of years, on and off. You know, the, the coffee house thing turned into um, the endless summer because I started doing that. I had intentions of being a journalist. Mm. Um, really? What yeah. kind of journalist? Well, I wanted to be a foreign correspondent. Okay. I used to read, you know, I, I really looked up to people like Edward R. Murrow and Walter Cronkite and uh, Dan Rather. There's a lot of these people, a lot of great Canadian ones too. You know, Peter Zosky, of course, and, and uh, Peter Jennings later. but. I mean, to me, there was nothing more noble than going to a dangerous place mm. in a foreign country and reporting back the truth. So I, I, I kind of I thought I would end up doing that or be a pilot. But as circumstances would have it, you know, I, I, I started playing coffee houses and pubs, and initially it was it was good. The riverboat was still open. What a fantastic venue that was! So much history there. Saw so many acts. I used to, I used to to play hooky from school so I could be first in line to see see Bruce Colburn, for instance, or Jackson Brown at that place. Uh, great little club. And so I, I started playing that. But then a lot of these clubs, a lot of these places started to close down. Of course, you start playing some of the rougher places, as I said. And then I started driving cab to help make ends meet. And then, uh, you know, I went on this uh, boat trip to the Caribbean and I crewed. Everybody thinks I was on a cruise ship. I wasn't a waiter on a cruise ship, you know, and, I was in, uh, it was a racing class catamaran, so I was on this, this boat, and it wasn't that long, I was maybe a month and a half, two months, and came back home, and we made the um, journey from Port Credit down to the Caribbean. 
and spent a little time there and went home trying to decide, okay, you know, if I'm going to do this, 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 try to do it right. And I spent a year at Humber College as well doing the music course prior to, to, to driving cab. And then um, decided to move to L.A. So off I went in my Pinto <laughs> station wagon to Los Angeles, and I spent the uh, better part of a year down there wearing out my knuckles, banging on doors, and going to publishers and playing coffee houses. I did that, and, and, and to no success. You know, Frank Davies helped set me up. A bunch of people helped set me up with names and numbers. and You know, and, and um, it's not a place you want to be without money. Mm -hmm. You know, L.A. You know, can be a pretty disheartening places any place can be without money it's tough to get around first of all you know so spread out so came back to Toronto uh, well, I have then, to interrupt and then, you met, here. then met Red Rider okay yeah. where is the pleasure is my business soundtrack okay well that was just that was prior that was during the whole folk routine okay let's just set and, it up yeah. Xavier Hollander the happy yeah. hooker had a it was a movie and you wrote movie. the soundtrack it was a movie but you gotta understand these were people was Al Waxman did this film Al Waxman? Al Waxman was the director on this film. And I remember Al coming into the studio and going, Tommy, it's got to be like this. We, this is going to be a Roman scene in here. <laughs> it was a comedy. Yeah, and there's a couple of good, nifty, you know, Alfie's theme and Gus's yeah, theme yeah. On, that, on that record. There's a couple of good tunes. I remember we were mixing. So Franklin Boyd set it up. He was a British uh, publisher that, that was affiliated with, with Frank Davies. But he was a character. I remember him coming in the studio. And he, he was so animated. He'd start dancing around the studio. We need something like, like something from Zorba the Greek. And he'd start to dance <laughs> around the freaking room. He was a character, man. Okay, was, sorry for that digression, but I just yeah. had to, I've just been so curious about this record yeah. ever since I found it. Yeah.